and I, I don't have a regular uh, PowerPoint presentation. I rather will give you guys a demo and talk through the demo. Um, what I'm gonna talk about is really about how we deal with data in the three-dimensional space. Like from from the last talk, the Stevens talk, like we learned that universe that you guys mapping are four dimension. Right? You have a x, y, depth, and then you have the velocity. So, so how do you visualize and interact this like inherently multiple dimension data? Is um, it's usually a challenge, especially if you only have a two dimensional space like a, a computer monitor, a projector, a piece of paper. So um, today I'm gonna present a uh, experiment. I, I, on um, how we interact with uh, uh, graph data in the three-dimensional space. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the concept of graph data? Graph, yes. Uh, thank you, yeah. So, so um, the graph is actually not an image. The graph is really about a commu a connections, um, about how, like, uh, let's see we have room people here, how we all connect with each other. Like, so if you look at this, Thing, you see many, many like uh, dots. Uh, they can be a person in there. And if two person has some sort of connection, you see they are connected. You give them a link. Do you need a clicker? A clicker. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, thanks. So, and then you put them out in the space, and you see, and, and from there you discover which group of people are connected, and how they are connected, and. Uh, <laughs> Which person are special? Like, uh, uh, what are normally? Which person are like uh, really does not belong in there? Uh, in fact, um, let's see. If you look at the uh, uh, like uh, what do you call Homeland Security, they use this kind of technique to detect terrorist <coughs> ring. So they put everybody's like uh, they collect so-called metadata to let's say phone call like you and like let's say, let's say if Piero and I had a phone call, then there is a record of event that we have a connectivity. So based on those like a small metadata, you can construct a graph that can tell you how people are related to each other. So now come to this side. So here's a graph that we built for uh, an event last September at the Moscone Center um, for Box Works event. Box provide a uh, online file sharing service. So they want to know, is their service improve the collaboration among people? What's the best way to, to do that? Then what's a better way to do that than just measure the collaboration among the people? So, so for this particular graph, what you're looking at is a construction graph. It's like from construction industry. And each dot over there is some person in the company. And each connection represents a file sharing uh, activity that happens. So you collect this data over the time. Uh, that data was collected over a period of three years time to map out all the connections uh, between people. It takes a little bit longer than the, the universe mapping, but it's a little bit slow. So, and then from there, you, 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 can, you can see many, many clusters. And, uh, and you can see those people who share many same, com same activities over there. So um, this is done in the three-dimensional space. What means like if I, if I see, you know, turn on these interactivities, I can move it around. I can go to individual dot. So now, what can we learn from this, uh, this kind of graph? Um, yeah, the best way to see what we can learn is by comparison. Let's see, this is a construction company where, uh, encouragingly, because you have many construction sites, and it's kind of distributed. So now let's take a look at the uh, health industry. <laughs> so.
So we are collecting the data over time, and the more and more collaborations gets discovered. As more collaboration, collaboration gets discovered, we discover a more complete graph. Now you can already see the structure of how people connect with each other is very different from construction companies. So what do you guys think about this graph? Oh, thank you. <laughs> what, what kind of difference do you detect from the, the previous graph? It has a shape. What's that? It has a ring, right? Yeah. So, so that's because I hide a gravity center in the middle. Um, so there's a, there's a weak black hole in the, in, the, in the center that pulls everything together. So the way the graph is constructed is, um, let's see if two people has a communication, has a collaboration. Then we, we see they are constantly pulling towards each other. And if two people does not know each other, they always push away from each other. So, so that allows them to relax into a pattern that allows you to see which group of people are correlated, are connected. And because, um, if you don't hide a gravity in the center, uh, the group that are not related to each other are going to fly away. Uh, so, so that's why we hide a, uh, a gravity in the center to pull everything together, prevent them from uh, flying away. So it would be more interesting to see a uh, compare a different industry. Uh, let's look at the, a bank. What do you guys think a bank communication structure would look, look like? Anybody want to guess? Yeah. Hierarchy, I think. Hierarchy, okay, that's well, one. Like a pyramid, probably. Like a pyramid, okay. Or only centralized, very interconnected and pushed towards the center. Wow, I'm impressed. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Finance. Is each one of those a bank? Uh, each graph is from different industry. Um, we pick one company for each industry to uh, yeah, study their communication structure. Or it's always spherical because we're always putting the center of gravity at one point. Uh, for this particular case, the spherical is not because of uh, gravity. It's rather because hierarchy, because pyramid structure. Yeah. And let's see what's in the center. <laughs> now, there might be a reason for this kind of structure. And imagine a bank has a structure of health institute. What's going to happen? I don't know. So in the future, we would like to do this, this kind of... Um, analysis for intra-industry like comparison. Now we, we compare the graph from industry from industry. Uh, one thing we have not done yet is compare like one bank with another bank and look at how the communication structures are different and correlate with the bank performance. Uh, that can tell a lot of story. So I'd like to show you guys one more graph. Um, how many of you code Code why? Uh, yeah. How do you think the the communication structure in a software industry look like? Sometimes spaghetti, sometimes chaos. Chaos. Yeah, I hear chaos. Yeah. So how does it work? More meshing, irregular, I guess, but still strongly interconnected. It's more chaotic. Let's see. So. Can you tell us what the node and the lines mean in each one of these? So each node is a person in the company. 
Each line is a collaboration activity being discovered between two persons. So, so a, a minimum of one contact with someone else? Or, that's right. Or a stronger colla collaboration? In fact, uh, you will notice some of the lines are thicker than the other. Uh, that's because between those people, there are many, uh, many collaborations being discovered. So we apply a heavier weight between those two people. And can I identify whose those are? And you can. And uh, how I would want to use this? There's many ways of using this. Um, you, can, you can identify how the information flow, who may be the gatekeeper of the information, why in certain situation the information is not getting through, and <coughs> is the information getting to the right people. Um, I actually talked to a uh, volunteer. They use similar technique to detect more as like abnormal, like uh, strange behaviors in this graph, and then they they can they, they use those kind of graph to see what are the anomalies, what are people that most likely uh, like have uh, fraudulent behaviors in so the organization. How, how are the colors related to relationships? So in this particular ca case, uh, the orange in the middle are mm -hmm. internal employees, and the pink. Or external. external. So, so you can s see uh, who said software is chaotic. chaotic? You right? Yeah. yeah I th I think you're right. Uh, it's it's a little bit anarchy, especially compared to the finance. You see two polar extreme. Um, and you can also see not everybody has a lot of external connectivities. So there are some people that's more connected to the external world than the other people. There's a lot of people just like. A, have a lot of conversations within the industry, within the companies, but not so much with, uh, to the outside the company. And how do you collect, collect these data? This data is collected over a period of a two to three year time when the company is using, um, <coughs> when, they, when they use box file sharing service. Mm -hmm. So every time, let's say, you drop a file on the, on the server and I access it, that's, that's a collaboration that gets that's discovered. So is there a, a software or a, a discovery tool that is uh, sufficiently standards-based that it would be like taking a QR code if they took a picture of this? Mm -hmm. They would be able to identify the, maybe not the identity of the client, but very close to getting to that person or that entity by just taking a picture of it? By taking a picture of this? Yeah. That's up to me to put that information in there. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, for now, let's see if I if I pull it close. Uh, well, we didn't put too many uh, labels in there because of uh, sensitivity issues. Uh, well, I couldn't find a label. Forget it. Um, <laughs> what's the technology you're using? Are you, are you holding anything, or you just have a detector there on the table? So, so here's a connect over here, mm -hmm. and it detects my skeleton. Um, and then we translate this skeleton data into controls to manipulate the graph. So i like to talk just a little bit about why we're doing things in 3D and uh, the learning from this practice. And in the traditionally, because the data is, has been so available, you know, visualizing 2D, so we, we, our brain is so in tuned in visualizing things 2D. Whenever we think about a graph, a visualization, we think about 2D. It turned out um, there's a few key differences between 2D and 3D. In 2D, imagine a web page. When you click a link, it takes you to a different place. So that's a magical experience um, because it, it's a transport experience. You suddenly go to a totally different space. In a 3D, however, it's more, more, more physical navigation. For example, like a, in this kind of graph, I navigate from one place to the other place. So what does it mean by, um, what, does, what does it help us by navigating instead of transporting? Well, um, we all use Google Map, right? How many times when you look at Google Map, you're wondering what's the distance from th this point to the other point? And now if you zoom in, zoom out, you ha when you're trying to figure out how far away it is, you have to do a lot of a mental calculation again. Now, if you walk on in this campus, it's very obvious to you 
how far away from one point to the other point. So, so in a 3D space, you cap the scale and perspective more, more in place, more in your mind. You don't have to mentally reconstruct it. But that's an advantage. Um, another advantage of 3D is really like, uh, like the universe data is inherently multiple dimension. And with, if you're trying to map out multiple dimension data into two dimensional space, you have to do a lot of work. Now imagine the construction, like a blueprint. Uh, it takes expert to create a construction blueprint and the reconstruction the blueprint into an actual model in the mind. Now with the with the three D CAD, CAD program, if you can visualize things in three D, you don't have to go through the mental reconstruction process. You already have the model in your uh, in your head, so that's a much more direct. Another thing is like we grew up in a three D world. We we so like intuitive about this chair, the distance, the shape, this plate, this person. Um, so there's a lot of intuitions building our brain that when we deal with 3D object, we can utilize in, in for for quick, quick model, quick like uh, building the model into the brain. So help us to deal with the data in a much more direct as, uh, and fast way. So. That's what we learned. Um, although there's a lot, still a lot of work to do in really developing how we, how to build a uh, human to data interface in a three-dimensional uh, world. Um, so we are we actually have ported those like uh, this graph and a few other visualizations into virtual reality. Like you put on Oculus goggle or. Uh, gear VR, and then you suddenly you you drop into a virtual world. You you facing this this forest of the data, and you can use your hand to navigate through. We're exploring uh, the potential of this way of interacting with data. Um, I know uh, using a lot of time. Yeah, uh, I, I'm still trying to understand one graph. Uh, what is the what what is uh, implied by the distance? Between so let's see. Uh, let's see if you, Pierre, and I all know each other. We're gonna attract each other. We're gonna come really close. And if you and I just know each other, but we don't have anybody else in between, we're gonna pull together, pull close together, but not so close. So the distance actually represents a, uh, a affinity <coughs> between two people. Like the closer they are in this space, the more likely. They are close to each other. And how is that inferred? Well, so let me finish. Let me finish, and then we go to the because I want to show some cool videos. And this is the setup that we demonstrate uh, at the Moscone Center. That let people walk up there and interact with it. So, Kinetech Arts, uh, like Pierre said, we're a dance company, actually. We, we use interactive technologies to work with dance, and we also take science conf uh, science scientific concepts and that to, to experiment how you can influence dance, what kind of performance, live performance, you can, you can create by using those scientific uh, concepts. Uh, that's Diany, that's the artistic director of Kinetech Arts. We set it up so the dancer can dance with the graph. Uh, we apply some, uh, we use physics model to create, create these interactions. Like we turn, turn hands, the movement of hands into hurricane, into wind. Uh, turn the center of the body into some sort of a black hole attraction, gravity attraction. And that, creates the movement um, of the graph.
So, last thing, um, uh, Kinetic Arts holds weekly lab, open lab, at uh, One Grove Street. It's from 8 to 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, we welcome everybody to come to join us, to experiment with us. Um, if you're artist, great. If you're a scientist, great. If you're an engineer, great. So, thanks you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>